Okay, uh, welcome back. So here's where we left off last time. Um, if, I, oops, if I swipe to make a match, the rows will collapse. And you, um, we kind of already almost have a game just this much. Um, yeah, but let's let's have it refill those rows and then also consistently look for new matches instead of having to only look for new matches once it uh, uh, once it calls to. Uh, okay, cool. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pop back over to our board class. And the last thing we made in our board class was our decrease row coroutine. And then we added that decrease row coroutine to the destroy matches method. Now, we're going to make a new method to uh, refill the board. So, I'm going to create two helper methods first. And then I'm going to create the coroutine that's actually going to refill that board. So, I'm going to need two helper methods. Uh, one, to uh, actually spawn in the new pieces. Uh, another one to check for any matches, and then uh, the pub or the coroutine is just going to cycle through doing those two things: checking for matches, refilling; checking for matches, refilling; checking for matches, refilling. And then once there's no more matches, then we'll let the player actually um, move using a state machine, which we'll make in our next video. Uh, okay, so if I go into my board class here. My first helper method. Uh, I'm going to make a private void, and I'm going to call this refill board. Okay, and then I'm going to make my double for loop, which you guys should be pretty familiar with by now. So for int i is 0, i is less than width, i plus plus. For int j is 0, j is less than height, j plus plus. Um, and again, I forgot my semicolon. It's so weird. Anyway, uh, what I want to do is I want to check to see if that position is null. So if all dots ij is null, um, then I want to instantiate a new game piece there. So I'll do vector2 temp position is equal to a new vector 2 ij and we'll create a kind of a neat effect here this video too where instead of just spawning in they slide in but we'll get to that um, we want to do int dot to use is going to be randomly chosen from 0 to dot stop length and then we want to instantiate that object. Uh, so we'll do game object piece equals instantiate. And then we have to say what to instantiate. We want to instantiate dots dot to use. We want to tell it where to instantiate it, type position, and at what rotation. Quaternion dot identity. And then we want to do all dots ij equals piece. All right, so what this does is it checks through all of our pieces, every row and every column, and checks if it's null. So now this should go after we decrease the rows. Um, otherwise, we might be instantiating game pieces where we don't want to. Uh, which is why I have this yield return at the bottom here, so that there's a little bit of a pause, so that every piece can move to its place. Uh, and we want to refill the board, create those new dots in their uh, places. Um, we also want to check to see if there are currently any matches on the board. And the reason we want to do that is that'll tell us if we should um, delete or destroy matches, decrease row, and then refill again. So that's part of the fun of this game is. Once you make a match, you get to have like four or five other matches happen right away. So I'm going to do a private bool. Then I'm going to call this matches on board. And again, since it's a Boolean value that we're creating, um, we need to have a return path. 
So I'm just going to automatically go for return path or return false. Okay. So now, again, those four loops. I is zero. I is less than width. I plus plus. J is zero. Oops. Int. J is zero. J is less than height. J plus plus. Okay. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to say if all dots i j um, is not equal to null, meaning if there's something that exists there, uh, if all dots i j dot get component, and the component I want to get is the dot script dot is matched. And then I want to return true. So this is just going to go through all of the dots and see if there, any of them have their is match flag on. And if their is match flag is on, then that means that there are matches on the board. If none of their matched flags are on, then we're going to return the false value. Uh, okay. So now we've got our two helper methods here. We're going to use our two helper methods to create the actual coroutine. So this is going to be a private enumerator, and I'm going to call this billboard co. And again, this has to have a uh, yield return statement. So first thing I'm going to do is refill the board. Then I'm going to yield return new. Wait for seconds. And I'll have it wait for half a second. That might not be enough time, but we'll see. Um, and then after it refills the board, I want it to check to see if there are matches on the board. If there are matches on the board, fill that again. If there aren't matches on the board, then move back so that the player can move. So uh, I'm going to create another while loop. So while matches on board. So while that's true, then I want it to yield return new wait for seconds, and I'll have it wait the same amount of time, half a second. And then I want it to destroy matches. And then it'll just keep doing that. Now, um, that should be fine for now. I'm going to want to do that iterations thing again here, um, even though that shouldn't be an issue, but let's jump back over. Um, okay, so I'll hit play after it's done compiling, and let's match. Oh, hey, I didn't actually call it from anywhere. So let's do that. Um, so after we decrease our row, and after we wait for seconds, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yep. Then I want to start my new coroutine. So start coroutine. Billboard co. I'll pop back into Unity. Hit play. All right. Now, if I swap these two, and there we go. Not too bad. Ta-da! So it's kind of the framework for the game. I mean, there's a lot we can add from here, but for the moment, I mean, this is this is how match three games work. Okay, cool. So, um. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the uh, description down below. Uh, next time, we'll talk about how to use a state machine to limit the player's uh, interaction with the game, and also how to make it look like the pieces are kind of sliding into frame instead of just appearing. So, yeah, have a wonderful day, and I will see you later.